this beach, out beyond all highways, on the farthest edge of Vancouver Island, the land of McQuinnah, here meet two men, Bert Clayton, prospector, and David Frank, singer, carver, and grandfather extraordinary. Let's begin in the rain, at the Indian village of Ahousen. David Frank, at home. When I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. well, he checked me up, looked at my heart, put something on my arm, start pumping away on it. Well, he looked at me. Well, Mr. Frank, he says, You've got a wonderful heart. You've got a heart of a man that's in his 30s. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, doctor. <laughs> well, you can live to be around 140. I says, no, no, that's too old. <laughs> there's, there's something else, too, you have. Not just the heart, there's something in there, too, that's young. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to meet a bear, when I was a youngster, well, I was kind of a kicked around, do you see, because I, father died when I was only five years old, and mother died, and I'd be here and there, and I started to pick up things, and I learned a lot from that, you see, how to live, and I watched the other people, how they live. And I only had a grandmother there, you see, and an uncle. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm here. What are these? They're all hidden. Now, here you are, boys. Here's one. Thank you. Here you are. Here. There. Eat it. Eat it. Now, see, you do that, fellas. Watch now. See, you take it like that. See? See? And shut it down in your mouth and start chewing at it. Mm -hmm. mm, Two hundred years ago, the villages of the west coast of Vancouver Island held a population close to 50,000 people. The arrival of the white explorers almost obliterated the culture and lifestyle of the Indian. At a house, that style survives with pride, humor, and grace in people such as David Frank. And I asked him, what is an organ for in a church? I said, what is it good for? What is a violin good for in a church? Why is a guitar in a church? I asked him that. Well, he didn't give me the answer. An elderly woman gave me the answer. And she says, it's just for the accompaniment of the music. Well, I had this one. It is the very same thing I had. Well, I just, that's what it is, is for. That's what this is for. I use this when I pray. And this is supposed to hand it down from the Almighty God, which has been handed down from generation to generation. That's the way I understand it. That's the way I start. Now, folks, I says, I took this thing, you see. 
See that bird, sir? See that bird, sir? Well, I shoot around like that. It's God's bird. Nobody is there to use the name of that bird. The bird has got a name. Hayasin. I don't see anybody. Nobody uses that name here on the coast all over up and down. The only time we use that word is when we pray to the Almighty God. Well, this fellow didn't give me no answers, but this lady answered my question, you see. Well, I told him, pretty soon you folks will be dancing in a church. James Adams, <laughs> David's close friend since childhood. Together they go gentle into that good night, traveling, lecturing, storytelling, with a fond escort of sons and daughters and a ready audience of grandchildren. Of all of David's stories, the run with James across the railway bridge is perhaps the most enjoyed. Preaching, it was a narrow one, you see, and there was two other girls ahead of us, you see, quite away. walking ahead of us. Does I wonder what would happen, folks, if there's a train coming? Because I seen this dress loss way over. Well, in about 10 seconds, and here it comes, whoa, 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 all the back, and here was a train coming, and we couldn't go back, we had to keep running. And we got off this way, and the girls went the other way, on the other side of the track, really old track. Well, he turned his back, say, change. He says, what? You better make a song about this track here. <laughs> he motioned the track like it. I says, James, I says, we got a little song now. I says, oh, just listen, I says to All right. And I blew like a train in the first place. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Then I used the Indian words. Oh, oh. the deserted village of Kelsmith, where David Frank was born 78 years ago. For Indian and for white, the years have brought changes. Speedboats, logging camps, mines, airplanes. But from Chief McQuinn's time to ours, this land of mists and mountains, stormy reefs and glassy seas remains an untouched paradise. far inlet which he has all to himself lives Bert Clayton, prospector. At 88, Bert stands like a figure out of history, but the old time picture is a real time person.
I got on this sailing ship. I went with the, down on the waterfront, and I contacted the mate, Mr. Daniels. And uh, the sailing ship was a Willie R. Hume. He's on the bank somewhere in, out of Portland now, I believe. Anyhow, I got on there as a cabin boy. Captain and his wife, Captain Wilson, and his wife were the skipper on the ship. She was a four-masted schooner. And that was when we took cargo of lumber to San Pedro, California. 850,000 feet of lumber. Los Angeles at those times, you know, was more or less a place for people to con convalesce into it. You know, the sick cases going down there and getting uh, rested up, you know. And when I run away from sailing ships, I wound up in Kamloops, you know, and uh, I hiked up the road from uh, Kamloops, North Thompson River, up as far as Lewis Creek. From then on, I didn't work for anybody. But I made enough money in padding to better than the wages that I could get working. Run around with a gold pan and a cayuse to pack my stuff and uh, the other one to ride. Actually, I like to get up early, you know. The earlier I get up, the better. If it's good daylight, I'll get up. And sometimes I don't wake up that, that soon. But I have got up here at 3 o'clock in the morning because I worked, you know, quite a bit during the day and I'd rest a little bit when it was hot. And then that makes it a better break for me. It doesn't get so hot. You can get lonely because your mind is forever working on different things. You get different ideas, you see. And religiously, to me, it's a religion in itself. Living. Yes. The very thought of living harmoniously amongst the animals in the woods and in the timber and the bush, why, well, that seems to give me a great sense of satisfaction. My work here, my way of thinking, is to try to produce something. If I'm capable here of producing a prospect that has the hopes of making a mine, okay, I'm doing something for other people that might uh, make jobs for other people, might open up the country, might help things in many ways. I think it's a, a sort of a feeling that creating something, you see? that you're out here to try and develop something. Anything that I'd be doing that way would be something of uh, trying to make something that other people might get some benefit of. I don't care what I get myself, but if I could create something that would, say, build a small community here, or uh, make something worthwhile that would create employment, that's, that's, that's one of my big thoughts. So often in our crowded cities, the old wait out their end in rented rooms or on park benches. Not Bert Clayton. The first thing is clean up and see the water supply and cut wood and then get out. Where we got to go now will probably be about 1,200 feet. Well, I'll tell you, I can't climb as fast as I used to. 
I used to go up that top camp here inside of three quarters of an hour, right from the beach, up 2,400 feet, 2,500 feet, right from the beach here, in three quarters of an hour. I've come down to that tram line, to the foot of the tram line, in 20 minutes. And I can't do that anymore. Oh, my legs are as sound as a bell. But I think I'm breathing is what's bothering me. And I think what caused that is uh, living in the woods and lighting a little fire and you're, you, you're breathing a certain amount of smoke. But if I'm packing, now I take my time, my breathing doesn't bother me hardly. I took that drill up last year up the hill, 2,200 feet, and a uh, good 56 pounds. So I got up to where I was working, and that didn't bother me. I can go up and down that hill, and it don't bother me. But uh, I don't like this bush, especially when it gets soaking wet. Gone up hill, southeast, 1,200 foot elevation. Back tonight, 4 p.m., Bert. This note, perhaps the one slender clue the world would ever have if Bert were not to come back from his mountain. Well, as soon as it got anyways dark, why, I'd make a little fire and heat a couple of rocks and put them on my back. I never carried a sleeping bag or a tent. That, that's out. Too much too much to pack. You got steel to pack, you got dynamite to pack, you got a little grub to pack, that's enough. But I always used to wear these old dryback pants and coats put out by pioneer people. They were good. In the nighttime, I'd put on my big Indian sweater. And I was as warm as a bug in a rug. I never, I never seemed to ever catch a cold. As long as I had a couple of rocks at my back, Right about your kidneys. Just make a little bit of a fire and heat the boulders. If the fire went out, worry about it. The rocks was hot, they'd keep you warm all night. She took, took her apart, boys. I had it one time. Oh, I guess, and gold was only $18 an ounce then, you know. I've had as much as three or $400, you know, put away, kept, you know, in a poke, that I could pay my way everywhere I went. This is a mouse trap, and I'm going to put some bait on it, raisins, like that, and like that, and like that. Mr. Mousy comes along there. He eats the raisins. He jumps onto this wheel here, and the wheel spins, and down Mousy goes into the water. The next Mousy comes along. He don't see no raisins until he gets down here. He jumps on the wheel, and down he goes. 
and the next mosey comes along, he does the same thing. And of course, they swim around and talk to one another, but there's no way out. I've got 24 this year so far. Among the burned out remains of a former home, Bert remembers his wife. I thought a terrible lot of Bunny, my wife. We spent 28 years married life that I don't think there was a crossword ever spoken. And it's taught me a whole lot. Harmony. Think harmoniously. Think carefully what you say to others that would hurt them. I don't crave, uh, you know, I don't crave riches and all that kind of stuff. I love living. I love the wilderness above all. And I think when I got away from the sailing ships and got up into the interior, that's when that started to build up in me. I, I love the wilderness. I think that uh, what I've done must have been all for the good or something, because I don't think anybody could be more contented with his life than I've been. I'm very happy, happier than anyone knows, in a way. And I, I feel that if I had to do it all over again, I think I'd do the same thing. Humor, curiosity, energy. These, for David Frank, as for Bert Clayton, have made old age not a disaster, but a gentle victory. Oh, girls, hello, girls. I'm going to you, Grandma. Just going to fish her, that's all. you grandmother girls. Also she was a very, very good woman. She gives a good example to a lot of ladies. So that was in 1924 when I got together with her. And that says that she was an early bird. She would be up five o'clock, start cooking, six o'clock, and we were on the table seven o'clock. And this is the kind of woman she was, and what every word to do, what be smoking fish, making dried fish together, even in hunting. She would be along with me, would be out hunting together, and we would work together in every way, whatever we do. I'd even help her with the cooking too. Well, you see, girl, and we got 13 children. Now I got nine now. There's four, yeah, four tight. I got nine children now. And 60 grandchildren. Well, that's a sweet thing, I would say. You know, a person that is in his right sense knew where he's going. Who is going to miss it? Not one of us. Not one of them in the whole world. Well, 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 hello, Dave. You don't need to be scared of that. It's nothing. 
Nothing. Was the last time we played? Oh, yeah. That was Clacken. down in Clark with yeah. you, Bircher. Yeah. I we remember had a lot of fun that day. Time, didn't we, eh? We sure did have yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Long You're looking time. very well. Sure. Yeah. Same with you. Yeah. Same with you. Yeah. Same with you. Yeah. Same with you.